Good morning, John. Welcome back to Bizarre Beasts Season Zero. Hank and I are trading off hosting duties on our year-long journey to remaster the original Bizarre Beasts episodes from Vlogbrothers with corrections, updates, and new facts. After college, I got a job working all by myself in a fungicide quality control laboratory. I know, it sounds super exciting. It was actually pretty exciting though, because I was the only person there and so I managed the lab all by myself. I ordered things, I designed SOPs, I did all the tests, I listened to lots of punk rock. But also it was awful because I would go to work and I would work all day and I would not see a single living thing that wasn't a mold. It was extremely boring and lonely as evidenced by these pictures of me wearing produce bags on my head. I'd just gotten my first digital camera and I was out to make some content. But then some days I did see other living things that weren't mold because it was Florida and I might see a black racer or a frog or get stung by a yellow jacket. And then one day, I saw outside of my window this little group of armadillos looking real cute. And I thought, I'll take my new digital camera and I'll take a bunch of pictures of them. Now, we are aware these days that you can get diseases from animals and you can get leprosy from armadillos. The official advice is do not handle them unnecessarily. And I did not. But if I wore my headphones and listened to punk rock, they would come over and they would snuffle my head. I think because they thought maybe the used or seven seconds was actually like a little bug crawling around as they do use their rabbit-like ears to listen for prey. Good fact, actually, the Aztec word for armadillo translates to turtle rabbit. I did not get leprosy from these armadillos, but even if I had, it's fairly treatable now, so that's good. Also, sometimes diseases cross from animals to humans, and we hear a lot about that, but leprosy actually jumped from humans to armadillos, so this is not their fault. One possible reason that Hank didn't get leprosy from these armadillos is that, according to a 2011 study, most people are naturally immune to getting infected by the bacterium that causes leprosy. There are a bunch of genes involved in leprosy susceptibility, and since you probably don't know what variants of them you have, it's still better to just not handle wild animals armadillos included. And like Hank said, we're pretty sure we gave leprosy to armadillos in the first place. And we have a couple reasons for thinking this. First, there's no evidence of leprosy in the Americas before Columbus showed up. Leprosy is a disease that leaves behind characteristic traces on the human skeleton. So we likely would have seen it in archeological remains if it had been here. Second, geneticists have used the relationships between different strains of leprosy to trace their origins and spread back to either the Near East or Eastern Africa sometime around 100,000 years ago. And while that seems like plenty of time for it to have made it to the Americas and gotten into armadillos, the way the family tree of leprosy comes together points towards it being a recent introduction to the Americas. Like sometime in the last few hundred years, with armadillos having either European or North African strains. So colonization and the transatlantic trade of enslaved people seems to be responsible for giving armadillos leprosy. And Yes, that is pretty weird. Because leprosy is also a famously wimpy pathogen among researchers. It's hard to grow in the lab, which makes it hard to study. But armadillos are kind of great hosts for it. And that might be because they have relatively low body temperatures for mammals. They run at a cool 32 to 35 degrees Celsius, which the leprosy bacterium seems to like. I took so many pictures of these armadillos. Oh my God, I had dad shoes even back then. Armadillos are most closely related to anteaters and there have been and are lots of species of armadillos, pink fairy armadillos, three banded, nine banded, giant armadillos. And then of course, in the past, there were the glyptodons, now extinct, probably because of guess who, us. But this video is about the nine banded armadillo, the only armadillo native to the US. And this species also lives other places in North, Central and South America, but the subspecies that lives in the US, interestingly, are all very genetically similar, suggesting that only a few made it this far north before establishing a population. These armadillos also always have litters of identical quadruplets. So that roll I was hanging out with, and yes, roll is the collective noun for armadillos, were probably brothers or sisters, all genetically identical. Other awesome things about armadillos, they live in places where there's a lot of water, so they have two different ways of getting across water, and they can choose which one they do. They can either walk under the water because their carrot and plates make them so heavy that they sink, or 
or they can inflate their digestive systems and swim on top of the water. And they have lots of choices in their lives. For example, mommy armadillos can decide after mating whether she wants to have those babies now or postpone it. If she's stressed out, she can push it for up to two years before she starts developing the embryos. Also, when they're threatened, they jump really high up in the air, which is a cool strategy to scare away a predator. It's not great at scaring away cars, which is why you might might see lots of armadillos on the side of the road that have had bad outcomes. And that is sad, but the good news is that nine-minute armadillos are great at surviving in the human-created landscape, even of an office park outside of Orlando, Florida. They are abundant. As a species, they are doing very well. And I love them. And I loved going back and looking through my old pictures from 2003. If you missed this critter the first time around, our Season Zero pin set is now available. This set includes all 12 of the animals we began this Bizarre Beast journey with on Vlogbrothers, including the armadillo. And this version has little gems on it. To get the Season Zero pin set, visit BizarreBeastShow.com. In this episode, Hank talks a lot about being from Florida. Well, I am from Texas, so here is my armadillo purse and my armadillo t-shirt and all my armadillo pins <laughs> and my armadillo earrings. It's armadillo all the time. <laughs> <laughs>